I'm Kyla Terhune. I'm an assistant professor of surgery and anesthesiology, and I'm the associate program director of the General Surgery Residency Program at Vanderbilt. More importantly to you, I'm actually the faculty head of house of Hank Ingram House here at the Commons. And when I was asked to make this video, I thought it would be great to reveal a letter that I had received when I was coming into my first year of college. So in the summer, I guess it was, of 1992, I received a letter, and it was a paper letter because I didn't even have an email address at that point. And at the top of it, it said, Dear Kyla, hey, Rumi, with a big explanation point, and with that exclamation mark, it had, you know, it was filled in with a bubble. And the first thing I thought is, there is no way this is going to work. So to prove myself wrong, though, I brought with me today to be in this video the person who wrote that letter. So Dr. Cam, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Cindy Cam. I'm professor of political science, associate chair and director of graduate studies in the Department of Political Science. And I guess I'm the author of that letter, although I claim no knowledge. <laughs> you definitely wrote it. <laughs> so Cindy and I actually roomed together not just one year, but we ended up rooming together all four years uh, at Princeton. From 1992, we finished in 1996. And then we split our ways. I went to medical school, or actually went to teach high school and then went to medical school. And Cindy? And I went to graduate school and uh, had my first job in California, and then we ended up here at Vanderbilt together. Yeah. So I came down to Vanderbilt in 2004 to start my surgical training, and I guess it was about... 2008 when I came, but in 2007 when I was interviewing, I called Kyla, of course, and asked, you know, what's Vanderbilt like? So Cindy and I, not only do we both work at Vanderbilt, what I didn't realize, now first of all, I still live in a dorm. <laughs> you don't. <Yes. laughs> that would be a difference. Uh, I live do in Hank Ingram House. Do you sleep in bunk bed? Um, I don't. <laughs> 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 Although probably that might be preferable some nights. <laughs> but I live in Hank Ingram House, and Cindy actually just works a half a block away. At the Common Center. And so I started, I guess, you know, I'm from a small town in Arkansas, you're from... A suburb in, near Philadelphia. And we have ended up in the same spot yeah. within a block. Yeah. So I thought we could talk about something that I thought would not work. How does this work? And I thought we could talk first about our similarities. Okay. Or, or differences. Maybe we should start differences. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because right. those seem better. like most apparent, right? Sure. Okay. So we already said the main difference. I was from, you know, small town in Arkansas. And I was from the northeast from a suburb of Philadelphia. I was very much into athletics in high school, played basketball, tennis. And physical coordination. <laughs> and she danced. Danced. Oh, yeah. Right? Danced, so, yeah. Which is shocking to me because I was not physically, I am not physically coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we both did instruments, though. That's yeah, true. Right? Um, let's see, what else was different? I don't um, think I did instruments as well as you did. So I played, I was in the band and the orchestra and the chorus when I was in high school, and so... Uh, thought about doing those sorts of things when I went to uh, college. And I sort of, they were more of a hobby for me. I enjoyed them. Okay. Um, I knew I was going to go into probably social sciences. I think I wanted to be a lawyer or a diplomat. And I knew I was definitely going into the hard sciences. And I thought at that point I wanted to be a doctor, although I wasn't sure what kind. Let's see, I... Uh, what else was different about us? Um, I didn't mind sleeping on the top bunk. Yes, and I definitely did not want to be falling out of there. So, <laughs> so that worked out. Um, my, um, I had been probably out of the state maybe two times, three times Out or of so. Arkansas. Out of Arkansas. Okay. And I had definitely not wanted to go to the South. <laughs> And, but had been uh, had traveled overseas, and my parents were actually moving overseas. Um, so we had kind of very different outlooks um, and experiences and where we had been and what we had seen. Mm -hmm. um, so what about some, some similarities? Okay. Uh, I think we were both um, wanted to do the best that we could do at anything we tackled. That's so, true. Yeah. We both slept with the window open. Yeah. Uh, we were both early risers. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm still an early riser. And my children make sure I'm an early riser. Uh, we both, um, I think, had seriousness of purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and we um, did a lot of community service together. That's true. We did community service. And we sang in the Glee Club. The Glee Club yeah. together. Yeah. That was an alto. And I was a soprano. Probably not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I would say if you look at the main similarities, we, I think we see the world pretty similarly. And, because most importantly, Star Trek brought us <laughs> together. I forgot about Star Trek. Yeah. 
So it's belief in a society where people get along and where uh, people make connections across different races and ethnicities and what would you say, species? We both want a better world. Yes. And so I remember sitting there Thursday nights, you know, we would watch Star Trek Voyager, which was fantastic because it had a female captain. Um, Jane? Janeway! Yeah, Janeway. Okay, that's what... (laughs) Cindy has a better memory than I do. Uh, And, yeah, so I trace my uh, commitment to Star Trek to uh, her influence, having now been to several Star Trek conventions. I haven't done that. (laughs) Um, Let's think about what now where we are because this is we're 15 years out from our college graduation a little bit more a little bit more yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and I enjoy hearing about your research tell me your research involves politics the sort of political persuasion by campaigns mm-hmm. how people think mm-hmm. during elections mm-hmm. and I find that incredibly fascinating and I don't know if you think anything about mine being fascinating at all <laughs> Well, I don't understand any of the science, but I will say there's something similar, too, about where we are, which is that we're both very committed to postgraduate training. Mm -hmm. So that's what Kyla does in Mm -hmm. her work, right? If I understand. That's exactly right. Postgraduate training, the training of residents uh, so that they can be in their surgery rotations and figure out what to do, Mm -hmm. right? So they can be practicing physicians. And I am involved in graduate education, so I train our graduate students in the discipline of political science and help them figure out their curriculum and how to do research as a political scientist and how to develop as an independent scholar. So I think that we actually have that in common too, that our uh, one of our primary sort of goals in our jobs is very similar. We just train people differently. I had not thought about that, but you're exactly right. And I don't know what you do, but I know that part. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'd say it's important when you're looking at your interactions in the coming years that you keep an open mind because the ones that you are sure, absolutely sure, are not going to work out may be the ones that be your friends for life. And I would say, um, you know, another difference between Kyla and myself is that she's a keeper. She's maintained so many connections with people, and I learned that from you. I mean, I'm, I'm so impressed by that. And I'm not. I'm sort of a moment person. And so there are only two people that I still keep in touch with from college. This person right here and the person I happen to marry. So you're in a pretty rare club, I'd say. Well, Cindy, I'm thankful that you've kept me. (laughs) And I'm thankful because I actually thought a lot about our relationship and our transition as I was reading the book that the first years are reading this year by Andrew Del Banco about college. Del Banco mentions in his book a concept that I think is extremely important. It's only two words, lateral learning. He talks about it first on page 54 where he describes it, and that's at least in the electronic version. He describes it as the proposition that students have something important to learn from one another. As a small town girl coming from Arkansas, when I went to Princeton, I honestly did not think I would be contributing anything. I went to absorb. In retrospect, I realized that that may have been a little bit shallow of my thinking. The next page, he says, it's the source of the question that every admissions officer in every selective college is supposed to ask of every applicant. What does this candidate bring to the class? I think that's pretty important. So I have a disclosure. I don't really remember a lot of the details from any of my classes in college. In fact, I don't even remember a lot of my professors' names. Those classes I saw as building blocks to the things I use and do now. What I do remember, I do remember the places. I remember the people who were my peers. I remember some of the professors who were very important to me. And I remember the ideas and concepts. And those are the things I've carried. And those are the things that I think you'll find that you remember the best as well, too. We had 293 people in Hank Ingram last year, and that, in addition to our family and our dog, that's a lot of opportunity for lateral learning. My closest friends in college, when I think about what they are, it's really a microcosm of my world today. I still communicate with them. There's an author, a playwright, a congressman, a radiologist, an emergency room physician, uh, people who have meant a lot and I still learn from. I think that that's something that you'll get. So sit back, when you're at college, sit back and Be surprised by the people you meet. Be open to the people you meet. Have an open mind and take that with you for 10, 20 years down the road. It'll pay off. I hope that lateral learning is something that you can create your own microcosm that's going to follow you for four years, five years, 10 years, 20 years in very surprising ways. I really see my job as being a sounding board, hopefully as an encourager of each of you, more importantly as a promoter of you as you continue to develop. 
but primarily I see my job to stand back and provide a venue or a platform to allow you to partake of this lateral learning and this idea of lateral learning. Sometimes that is serious discussion around the table with an author or someone who can inspire. Sometimes that is fun. I think of one uh, element last year where we had a Humphreys fellow from Myanmar come in and introduce us to the idea of the water festival. Uh, I think of that as our Friday nights when we have people into our apartment just sitting around and playing games, but most importantly sitting around talking to one another. So on behalf of my family, my husband, our children, our dog, we welcome you to Vanderbilt. We welcome you to Hank Ingram. If you're joining us, we welcome you to the Commons uh, in general. I think it's going to be a phenomenal experience for you and hopefully that lateral learning will resonate with you as well.